Amen. Why don't we keep praising his name this morning? Amen. I wonder if we can call on his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Let's praise him for a couple more seconds. Hallelujah. God, you're mighty. God, you're mighty. God, you're mighty, Jesus. Amen. Can we give him everything we got this morning? Hallelujah. 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 God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy, Jesus. God, we need you. God, we need you. God, we need you, Jesus. Amen. Can we praise him for a little bit? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you mighty, God, you mighty, God, you mighty, I make you lift up our hands this morning. Hallelujah, let your fire fall down on me. We can't do the flame with it. Him this morning. Worship him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All I want to do is worship you, God. All I to do is worship you. All I want to do is stay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands. As I lift my hands to heaven. Let your fight Can we worship him this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. 
You shout it this morning. Bless his name this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord with me. Amen. Why don't we lift our voices and shout this morning? Amen. Can we call on his name this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the Lord with me. Amen. Can we sing it this morning? Amen. Why don't we lift our hands when we sing it this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Can we worship him this morning? Amen. Let's lift our voices this morning. Let's shout. Let's call his name this morning. Jesus, Jesus, shout it to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's shout his name. Let's raise our hands and shout it. Jesus, Jesus. Shout it to the Lord. Amen. You can feel him responding when you shout his name. Let's call his name one more time. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, 
Amen. Can we call on his name this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Can we praise him this morning? Amen. We don't have to have dead church. Let's praise him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. do something you can defeat it right now if you praise him amen can we call on his name this morning
Amen. Can we sing it this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we give him thanks this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. It's in. It's in my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My choice can play. Hallelujah. It's in my praise. Amen. You can be delivered of whatever you're going through right now. Just praise is your weapon. Praise is the steps to climb up the hill. Praise is the key. If you're dealing with something, you can get delivered if you praise him a little bit. Why don't we lift up our voices and praise him this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's in my praise, it's in my praise. The victory, it's in my praise. No defeat, my choice to play. Hallelujah, it's in my praise. Amen, why don't we praise him some more? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, you can make your way back to your seats. Psalms chapter 150 and verse 2, it says, Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. If God's been good to you, you got to praise him. You got to give him praise. Amen. And like the song was saying, like verse 1, praise is my weapon. It's true because if you're dealing with something and you need, if you need deliverance, you just got to praise him. And praise is the key. Praise is the way that it helps you. Amen. God's been good to you. Can you clap your hands this morning? Amen. Amen. Does anybody have a testimony? Sister Missy? Amen. He's a protecting God. Amen. Sister Tanya. Amen. Anybody else? Sit your Nancy. Amen. Sister Leslie. Amen. Amen. Sister April.
Amen. Sister Erica. Amen. Brother Harold. Amen. Amen. Sister Anna. Amen. Amen. Sister Nancy. Amen. Anybody else? If not, can we all stand for prayer request? Praise God. I want to just say what a wonderful church we have. If you helped at the meeting, if you cooked or gave financially or did anything to support the meeting, I'm praying God blesses you triply this week. And those uh, There was a bunch of us working on the building and getting it ready for the meeting, and you don't know the support that this little church is doing just in our region. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that came here not knowing what they were going to do with themselves, and because of our sacrifice, God has brought them a bunch of faith. We always talk about the faith as a grain of a mustard seed. You know what's simple about faith? Is it's so small you can lose it real quick. And so you just got to keep it. It means you got to focus on it and you got to you got to keep it. You can't just act like it's just easy to do. You got to be serious about it. The faith is a grain of a mustard seed. That thing is real tiny. So there's a caveat to everything. It just takes just that much to do move mountains. You can lose that much real fast. Coming to church helps you build your faith. Grow that seed. Praise God. Well, we're thankful for all of you. And give yourselves a hand. If you helped, give yourselves a hand. Praise God. If you didn't help, there's next year. You can help some more. And get, in, get involved. Uh, it just takes a ton of work, a ton of money. And a ton of energy. And everyone is tuckered out. It's this part of it. Praise God. God's good. If you have a prayer request, I'll call on you. Sister Erica. April. Amen. Amen. 
Such a mess, eh? Amen, in Jesus' name. Sister Jessica. Come on, Sister April. Sister Nancy. Sister Tanya. Sister Nancy. Amen. Orlando. Amen. Sister Pearl. Wesley. Jude? Not very many Judes out there. Yeah. Jesus' name. Brother Jeff. Sister Tanya. Amen. Sister Misty. Amen. Brother Jamie. Amen. Brother Jeff. Amen. All right. Anybody else? All right. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we need you to touch us today. God, we ask you to move. God, send angels. God, to minister. God. Do whatever you got to do, God, to draw people to this house, God. Heal their bodies, heal their minds, God. Break the chains of addiction, God. Break the chains that are holding people back, God. We ask you to send your spirit today, God, to stir people up, God. Touch them in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. If you have a tithe or offering to bring to the Lord, you bring it. If you need prayer in your body, come forward, we'll pray for you. I'm going to build you a throne that you can see.
Can you sing it? Oh, can you just give him some thanks this morning? Oh, I'm going to thank you for mighty things you've done. Oh, lift up my soul. Hallelujah. Fill you with your own. Thank you, Jesus. Can you clap your hands? Can you lift your voices in worship to the King of Kings? God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. God has helped us. God has kept us. God helped us with that meeting. And preachers call me and tell me they've got fire now. And I'm thankful for that. The hell we fought to get there was enough for me for one week. It was one thing after another. Had people trying to get in our house early in the morning. And just about every appliance we had broke down. It just the devil fighting. And it wasn't just me. But Andrew Crush was snowed in for six days. Couldn't get out. Other preachers had trucks blow up. Houses freeze. This is just a mess. But it just goes with the course. When you fight against the devil in spiritual strongholds, uh, you're going to fight you're going to fight hard. Amen. Praise God. Um, I do have a message from the Lord for us this morning. And uh, turn with me to James chapter 1. <clears throat> I want to tell this. I do not want to preach this this morning. I want to preach something else. But I'm not the boss. When God speaks, I have to obey. When God speaks, you have to obey. You can choose not to. That is your, I guess you could say you're right. You could say that that's your God-given right. Your free will to choose. Uh, before I go any further, I want to thank our visitor, this young man that came with Jax. Thanks for coming, buddy, whatever your name is. Brantley, thanks. But let's give Brantley a hand for coming to the house of God. He's a good, good, sharp-dressed-looking young man. Them two boys have a future in the Lord. You know, God shows us stuff all the time. He, he, Brother Bo said it. He still reveals his secret to the prophets. Sometimes that secret's a scary secret. James chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, this is God using his preacher, his, his brother, to tell you that if you lack wisdom, let you, you need to ask of God. Let him ask of God that giveth to men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. There are people in this house that need to really pay attention this morning. There's people that decided not to come to church this morning. They need to pay attention. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let that man think that he shall for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all. Everyone say all. And it doesn't leave women out. This is speaking to mankind. A double minded man is unstable in all. His ways. I had something else that I thought I was going to preach. I told Brother Bo what I wanted to preach today. And, oh, it's good. But it's sermonizing until God gives me release to preach it. But as I was praying yesterday, the Lord started speaking to me and, and he showed me something on Friday night. And he sent me here with a very direct message. This message this morning is coming not from Nate Leckenby. It's coming from God. 
So you can take it and you can say, he's just doing whatever he wants to, to try to scare people. No, I'm not interested in that. I could care less about that. But the word that God wants me to preach to you this morning um, from this subject is this. Time is up. Make up your mind. God's tired of you messing around. There's people that in here that have walked in here with the thought that they have it all together. And God is going to debase you this morning. So you can sit there and fool around. You can think in your mind that God is full of love and mercy. And the only reason this is literally the case. The only reason you're standing here this morning is because the mercy of God stepped in at the final moment. This is it. And there's several of you that God has showed to me. And I'm going to preach to you today. When I'm done preaching, I'm just going to get out of the way. And it's up to you. However you feel like you're going to respond will determine your eternity this morning. Within 48 hours of this message, if you don't change, you are going to face calamity like you've never faced before. If you don't heed the warning, pray with me this morning. Father, we need you. We need your help. We need your touch, God. We need you to get to just bless us with your presence, God. We need you to help us. God, we need their souls in the balance. God, you've sent us here. God, with mercy this morning, God, help us today, God, to get our minds on you, to focus on you today, God. We ask you to touch us. Help us in Jesus' name, God. Let us pray for wisdom this morning, God, to understand, God, what you're trying to get across to us, God. Help us, God, to wake up and pay attention, God. We ask you to help us to heed in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I don't have a long story. I have Bible this morning for, for you to read scriptures that um, you will forever haunt you if you don't listen and scriptures that you will be so thankful for if you do. God has sent me here with a mandate to Shout one final warning over the wall. His mercy, he's full of mercy. And you can say, well, that's, I'm brand new. I'm not talking to brand new people. I'm talking to people that are messing around with the Lord. His desire this morning is that you change, that you stop your fooling around with him. You're not fooling around with me because I'm, I'm just his worker and his servant. His desire is for you is for you to turn from your wicked ways, to repent of your attitude. Then we stop right here and just say, there's people that should be here this morning that they're listening online. It's going. I'm assuming it's going. I haven't checked with Jamie. Is it going? He nodded his head. I just couldn't see it. And they've decided to stay home thinking, well, I'll just get my fix from church from online. And the only reason I have online is because I feel it's right right now. But as soon as he tells me to turn it off, I'm turning it off. And that final lifeline for you will be gone. But the desire of the Lord this morning is for you to repent. Repent of your pride. Repent of your false appearance. Repent of the bitterness that's buried deep in your heart. Repentance I've been preaching for weeks, almost months now, maybe several months on repentance. Repentance is not coming to the altar and saying, I'm sorry. That's not what repentance is. That's saying, I'm sorry. Repentance is this, Brother Will. Repentance is coming down and saying, I'm sorry, and then getting up and turning your entire life to face towards God. Everything you do, you stop fooling around with things of the world. You stop dealing with things in the world, and you turn your life and you face it wholly towards the Lord. There's been many people prayed for this morning, and I know that God told me he's going to pluck today. He's going to remove many, but there's no change. Some of you have come to this church this morning grieving the Holy Ghost. That's a scary thing to grieve God. You put God in a place of, of anger and you grieve him, that's a scary spot to be. One place it says it's better for you to fall on him and be broken, fall on the rock and be broken, 
for rather than the rock to fall on you and you be crushed. These people that have showed up and they're listening online have been playing games with God, abusing the grace of God, play in church, as it were, just coming in and doing the same old song and dance, doing what you thought you were to fool me. You never fooled me in the first place because I'm God's seer in this area. I'm God's seer in this church. And I've had two prophets call me and, and confirm this to me. So I'm not, this is not something I want to do. There was times that God winked at ignorance. His grace and mercy are, are full. His mercy is everlasting, but his grace is not. Long suffering is long, but there is an end to the long suffering of God. And he sent me to preach to you what could be your final message. I know who you are. I didn't know yesterday, but I asked him to reveal you to me, and I've seen you. And your soul could be called into eternity this morning. I'm just going to preach it how I feel it, and then I'm going to get out of the way, and it's up to you. During the meeting Friday, the Lord showed me something that I was seeing in one individual, and God told me their haughtiness and pride has, in their haughtiness and pride, they have resisted me. And now I'm going to resist them steadfastly. That's pretty scary. Yeah. When you think that God might start resisting you. There's people that are in trouble with God. There's people that have had the attitude of pride get on them and haughtiness in their own spirit. And delusions that like Nebuchadnezzar, I have done this for myself. I have pulled myself out of the hole. I have done this. And you said I so much to God, he's fixing to take your eye. He's going to take you. He's going to take you to where he's going to send you for eternity. And the fact that you're here is the proof that God truly does have mercy. Because if he was done with you, we'd already be hearing the sirens and the funeral procession for your life. Time is up this morning. You better make up your mind. God's extended one last opportunity. He's done messing around. If I could be plain, I would use terms that would really scare you. But I'm going to try to use acceptable words. And so I don't want to act or be anything that I'm not. But what I feel is shocking to me, and it scares me. His anger is fixing to smoke against you. There's fear that the devil can bring. Felt it. I know what it feels like. There's fear that spirits can come upon you and you can think, oh, man, I can get out of it. It'll make you afraid. I've been there, done that, seen it many times. And then there's a fear that God can put on you that you can't even stand on your feet. You, your knees will quake. Belteshazzar, when he was weighed in the balances, this is stuff I've preached for the last six months. And just because you weren't here, if you were off fooling around, with the world, the warning still went forth. You say, well, I didn't get the memo. It's not my fault. If you go to Ezekiel and look in Ezekiel 33, the warning is shouted from the wall. I'm not telling you to turn there. You just mark it down in your Bible, Ezekiel 33. The warning is shouting, shouted from the top of the wall. And it's sent over your life. And you may not have heard it, but you... You start seeing other people around you shaping up. There's something that was said over the church. And if you were off in some sort of la-la land or some sort of inebriation or some sort of drug-induced thing and you didn't hear it or you just decided, I'm not going to go to church for the next several weeks, the warning still was sent. And the blood is not on my hands. It's not because I've been preaching. There's people that have skipped church today and there's people that are going to try to skip church tonight and this could be their final service. The one service that was key, I've, I don't know, a few hundred times I've mentioned it, you don't want to miss service because that service could have been your last service. You know, church attendance is not important. 
We're playing a game that's for eternity. It's not one that we're just going to, it's you're going to end your life and then you have a new reincarnation. That all stuff is garbage from the world. But what is true is there is hell and there is a heaven and God is fixing to send someone to hell. God's angry. The Bible says that open rebuke is better than secret love. It also says that them that sin to rebuke openly. Who in here wants to be embarrassed this morning? I don't. But the Lord has sent a message of mercy with stern rebuke. One last time. This is it. This is your final one. Yesterday I was getting ready to take a nap and I was thinking about the church and people in the church. And God spoke to me. He said, you're not going to dung around those trees no more. And I thought, oh no. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Luke chapter 13. There's people that Sister Leslie knows that need to come to this church. Her son, her daughter, I met Bailey. She's very sweet. And I'm using you as an example, Sister Leslie. We didn't know you before, what, two weeks ago? I think it's been like two weeks. And there's people just like her that are fixing to take some people in this church's seat. This is the truth. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 says this. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said to the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, really pay attention here. Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. The direct statement right after this is, Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? The husbandman answers to the Lord of the vineyard, and he said, answering, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. The instruction given from the Lord of the vineyard to the husbandman, the dresser of the vineyard, was this ain't producing fruit, cut it out. You cut it out. And then the husbandman turns around and says, well, I'm not the Lord of the vineyard. If it, let, let me work on it one more year. And the Lord, this is what he showed me yesterday, is he is going to cut it out because he sent me here for three years, three and a half years almost, to work on some people that have been in this church, that have backslid from this church, that have left to go to other churches, that have walked away, that are in sin, and their haughtiness is before the Lord. It's come up as a stink. And the Lord of the vineyard is going to show up and he's going to cut down your tree. As I thought about this, I, I thought, why? what if I can work on it a little bit longer? And he just said, nope, it's done. It's final. And I prayed and, and said, okay. I went and took me a nap and I woke up and God has impressed upon me to preach this to you. And that time is up. Make your mind up this morning. If you're new and you don't know what all this is about and you're trying, there's a difference between a struggler and one that's fake. I'm thinking about Sister Nancy. I, I told her, her and some other people, I said, be fake right here in the door. Act, act fake. And I was, I was just joking because I, we wanted to really fool Sister Deathridge for her birthday. And so I didn't want her to know that, you know, like everybody looking like, and didn't she even catch on? Well, this, that's the type of fake that people have been acting towards the Lord. They've been showing up, standing in place, come to church when it suits them. When they do get here, they act like they've got it all together. People will leave church for months, not see them and proclaim that God has used them when God has not used them God has rejected them I'm going to try to be direct as possible but if you resist he may have me tell your name it's a scary thing I'm going to tell you this this morning that the Lord is done playing games he showed me this yesterday the Lord gives and the Lord takes away 
I've worked with people here in this church. I've given from my family. I've taken from my family to give to people in this church. And I haven't got anything in return for it. I've made them suffer. I've not allowed them to go on trips and different things just for us because I've give and I've taken from them. And that's just part of my job because my job is to dung around the tree. I'm just the dresser of the vineyard. And I've give and give and give. And he said, it's done. You're not doing that no more. In fact, I feel like he's put me in a cage and he's not letting me do it. He's not going to let me do it. This is it. It's your final warning. This, there will not be another message preached across this pulpit to reach for your soul if you don't change. And what I feel like is that people have lost a fear of God. They've lost the fear of the Lord. The whole duty of man is this, sums it up just like this. Ecclesiastes says the whole duty of man is to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. And you've faked the keeping of commandments and you've faked your, your submission and you have faked the whole attitude of living for God. You've faked it all. And God is angry. Remember, I said there's a difference between the struggler and someone that's fake. The struggler is the person that's, they're trying. We're, we're just every day, we're here. The same faithful five. I just said five. It's not, there's no number to it. But the same faithful few, we could say. And this type of person that the Lord showed me on Friday shows up to church when they want. And they think they're the centerpiece. They think that their sin and the things that they're steeped in are pleasing to the Lord, and he is not pleased. He is irritated. Why do you think repentance is so important? It's because you get that rap sheet off of you. But the moment you turn your back on God, that rap sheet starts working again. The Bible says in one place that a day that a man does good, all his evil is forgotten. But a day that a man does wrong, all of his good is forgotten. God is fair balanced. He will help. But some of you have been weighed in the balances and you stand literally before judgment. And the only thing standing between you and eternity this morning is his mercy. There's a guy that went to the doctor and the doctor said, you have a week to live. He says, oh man. Well, what do I got to do? He goes, well, you got one chance. The guy said, I'll take it. That's where some of you are at. If you don't take the chance this morning, it's done. You won't even be back tonight. Something will come up. You'll have something to do. You'll have a excuse. I didn't pray for confirmation, but Sister Nancy prayed for somebody and said, help them get rid of their excuses. Because the thing that's in my note is God's sick of your excuses. Well, I, I can't get here because this. You called me and asked for gas money. I'm talking about the people that aren't here. We have a bus. We have a van. All of us have cars and we can come get them. But they've chosen to just do their own thing. And there's people in here that are literally standing on the razor's edge of judgment. And judgment could fall or judgment could be rebuked. The Bible says mercy rejoices against judgment. You say, well, this message is not for me. Are you hearing it? It's for you. You say, well, I've been struggling. Well, that's good. Because those that sin rebuke openly so that others may fear. That's the scripture in your Bible. That's the word of God for you. This story, the Lord woke me up and this morning and this story came right to my mind. Acts chapter 5. I want to read this because this is I've got to just tell it like he's showing it to me. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. It says, But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. 
they had this chunk of land that they were being really impressive to the preacher with. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived in this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, she must have told him the same story, answered unto her telling me, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she, she said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, there's a lot of things happened in the Bible when Peter said. Peter is the one that quoted this behind me. You see what it says at the top? Then Peter said, here it is again. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which carry, have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet, yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. This is a story of two people that committed it in their heart to walk in fake, to say that God used them, that God was using them to do this or that or the other. And they brought their price in and they, and they faked it and God struck them dead. I've seen the death angel in Rock Springs in the last several days. I've had preachers tell me what it was. I've had preachers confirm to me that have never even been here, confirm it to me that the death angel is here. And I had another preacher call me and I asked him, I said, what does this mean? And he said that there is going to be death visited upon your church. And I thought, oh no. He said, it could be backsliders, could be people in the church. I said, well, tell me, is it for my family, my own personal family? He said, no. I said, okay, I trust prophets. When the man of God speaks, I trust him. But I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. And I've prayed and I've felt two o'clock on Thursday morning, the death angel showed back up just to let me know he didn't leave. And God has sent it here to perform a work. And it might be you he takes. It might, it might be a family member of yours. And you've come to church with excuses. Well, I had this going on and I couldn't be here and I had that going on and I had this situation come up and you've done everything you could do to fight the church. You say, well, I haven't fought the church. Well, the Bible says this, he that is with me is with me, but he that is not with me is against me. You're either for God or you're against him. Some of you have done the work of Satan. I'm not going to support the church. I'm not going to support them financially. I'm not going to show up and help. I'm just going to show up and give, get what they can give me. Well, God's done with that. I'm done with it. I'm broke as a joke. I've helped more people than I probably should have. But you know what the Bible tells me? I have to. Because when I do it to the least of these, I'll give as much as I can. I'll sell whatever I got to. God won't let me sell nothing anymore. I probably couldn't even give it away. He said, no, you're done. It's not going to happen anymore. You're not going to provide. This is what's going to happen. God's done playing around. He's sick of your excuses. This is what he showed me. You've encumbered the ground too much. Too long. The warning's been sent. Some of you I've spoken directly to. Some of you I've preached over the pulpit to you. Some of you I've sent you text messages. And you have not heeded. I've preached repentance for the last several weeks. But you've resisted. And the Lord showed me Friday night that he is going to resist you if you don't change this morning. I'm not joking when I tell you this. I've seen the death angel, and he's going to show up to your house. I don't know whose house, but I know who I'm preaching to this morning. There's people that have come to this church that are building their own kingdom. They're not interested in God's kingdom. God called them here to build the kingdom, and they've said no, and they've 
gone to do their own thing. And they've pushed, literally working with the devil, pushed against the ministry, pushed against my family, pushed against those faithful saints that are here, and God's done. In our scripture this morning, the Bible tells us in our text that if you lack wisdom to ask God to give it to you. Did you pray that this morning? God, give me wisdom. Well, here is wisdom. You better repent. You better change. If you're new, just know that this is a message to help you fear to, to change. Not one that I'm trying to scare you with. I'm just the messenger of God. But this is wisdom. You better turn your life around and become humble. You better submit yourself and obey what the Lord is doing here. You better light a fire under yourself because God has done. One greater than me is here this morning with a flaming sword before you. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1. This scripture the Lord sent me to, or this set of 13 scriptures the Lord sent me to last night. And this, I'm just about finished. This setting of scripture is the sum of what I'm talking about this morning. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20 says this, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gate, in the city she uttereth her words. Wisdom has been speaking for months. God is the spirit of wisdom and he has been trying to get you to turn. He has sent calamity to you already and you've not heeded it. And this is what wisdom has been saying. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. This is where you've been. This is where you're at. For the past three, th three years, you've chosen to be simple. I'm going to do it my way. That preacher is off. There's a lot of people that have talked bad about me that God's fixing to take vengeance on me. Not, not upon me, take vengeance for me. I've prayed about it. I've asked God to fix it because I feel it. Every day I wake up, I feel that there's people tearing me down, which whatever, I don't really care. But I feel it and I'm getting annoyed with it and so I've been asking God to fix it. Well, he thinks he's smart. He thinks, this is not in my notes, but this is what... It is, he thinks he knows what he's doing. I'll tell you right now, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm running around in circles as fast as I can trying to build a church. And there's people running around behind me trying to take it apart as I build it. I'm not saying I'm building it. I'm using my family and people in this church to build it. But there's a revival that God is bringing. And you might not have your seat after tonight. When Brother Bo preached that, Friday night, daily. You're going to start seeing people in here daily. But he's fixing to trim some people out. I don't like being purged. Anybody in here like diarrhea? No, it hurts. It's painful. It's frustrating. I'm not trying to be gross or vulgar. But that's how fast people are going to leave. It's going to flow. Just gone, 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 gone. You say, oh, that's not me. If you're hearing it, I'm talking to you. You've hated the knowledge of God. Your imaginations have brought you to think yourself higher than God. That your word is powerful. That he speaks to you without speaking to me. I tell you this much. I don't think that I'm very spiritual. I just don't. But there's not a person in this church more spiritual than me. There's not a person that's come to this church more spiritual than me. There's preachers that walk as prophets that I think they're way more spiritual than me. But God has showed me lots of stuff. The mercy of God is present. Stepping in between you and in him, but he's done. He's going to pull mercy. He's going to send judgment. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit into you and I will make known my words unto you. You want him to fix it? You better repent. Turn at his reproof. Don't make him take your family. Don't make him take this, take that. He'll take it all from you. The Lord gives and takes away. If he'll do it to a perfect man like Job, those that are sinful don't stand a chance. Repent before the Lord this morning. He'll cover you with the Holy Ghost. If you come to this altar and you, you do your old same song and dance, I'm just going to do this and that and 
I'll fake it in front of the church. You will walk out of these doors and you could die. Could be hit by a car, space debris. I don't know. All I know is that the angel of death is here and it's been here for several weeks. And it could visit you. It could visit one of your family members. If you repent, God will cover you. But if you don't, this is what is going to happen. Verse 24. This is the Lord speaking. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. He's telling you because I've sent the preacher and I've sent the message to repent, to change. If you're struggling and you're living for God, keep doing it. But if you've built a facade and you come in and you're gone for a while, you come back and you've gone for a while and you come back and you're gone, that's what he's sick of. A double-minded man is unstable in all, all his ways. This is what's going to happen because I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when your di distress and anguish come upon you, God is going to laugh at you. He's going to look at you and just laugh and laugh. When you beg him to change a situation, he's going to just laugh. He'll hear your prayers. He'll hear the prayers of this church. If you've chosen not to repent and submit to the will of God and resist him for another, you only have maybe a few hours. Trouble's going to hit because of your resistance to him. The death angel may show up to your house. I prayed that God would send him to your house to scare you last night. I don't know if he did or not. I know it's here. When the death angel fulfills his purpose upon your life, you're going to know, everyone will know that you oppose the Lord. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. You ever thought about how it would feel if God wasn't near you? You ever thought about it, how it would feel if you went to him and you said, I need you now? And he said, nope. I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why is he so angry? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Every time the preacher got up and preached, you better repent. You better change your life. You better do this and do that. You've went home and said, that's not for me. When I've counseled you directly and said, don't do this, don't do that, stay away from this, stay away from that. And you said, mm, I'm smarter than him. God's fixing to laugh. You're going to lose everything. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. These things are going to happen and they're going to happen to you if you don't repent. Friday night when God was speaking to me, he was showing me three men, three young men that were resisting. He was making me so angry. I was ready to just send them out. And then there was another person that was acting completely opposite but it was the same spirit of resistance. They came here literally to block the service. They came here literally to stand in opposition against me, against what has gone on, because they think that they're in, they're in charge. God's fixing to show them. He's going to show them his. I told my brother, he's fixing to flex. He's going to flex for the people that are good, and he's going to flex on people that are bad. That's a new age term, which means he's going he's gonna to show sudden destruction. People come in here and act like God's on their side. Oh, God's doing this and allowing me to do this, and you're sitting in sin. God is not in the middle of your sin. He's not in the middle of your foolishness. Well, I, I don't think the preacher's right. He didn't see. I've seen more stuff for your life than you'll ever imagine. It's not because I'm special. It's because I'm the seer here. God takes me out and puts a new preacher in here. They'll be the seer. But right now, you got me. He's going to show this world that 
He's going to show this area that he's the one that put me here. I didn't come here on my own. Ask my wife. I didn't ask to come here. God called me here. There's people that are in this city that want to be saved. And I've God just teased me with them. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going, where are they at? Well, there's things that he don't like. One bad apple spoils the barrel. I've preached about bitterness. I've preached about sin. And if you don't get rid of it, he's going to take you out. He's done tolerating it. But there's a huge difference between someone that's struggling and someone that is just resisting. It looks good on the outside. You probably think they're spiritual. You that don't know them. But God has shown me. He's going to resist you steadfastly. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, don't refuse him that speaks to heaven because he's going to shake. He's going to shake the heavens. He's going to shake the earth because he wants things to remain. You ever seen rotten fruit? You know what happens when you shake the tree? It falls off. He's fixing to shake the tree. I preached about it. Shake, shake, shake. What, three months ago? Do you think that was just me? I was thinking on the way here. People probably go back and look through our videos and go, he's just a, such a great planner to plan all these messages. I am not that smart. I, I preach what God gives me every single service. I teach Bible studies in the doctrine, and I teach that. But when it comes to preaching, I give a fresh word. I don't have anything pre-cooked. Time is up. Make up your mind. There's people that I've reached for for the last three years. And there's, there's three places you're going to find yourself. Losing everything, prison, or hell. That's where you're going to end up. That's your choices. Go talk to somebody that spent some time in prison. They don't want to go back. Go ask the rich man that went to hell. Ask him. Go read in your scripture. See how much he wanted to be there. And for some of you, you're fixing to be escorted there very quickly. You've resisted him. You've resisted the ordinances of the Lord. You've resisted the instruction of the Lord, and God's going to fix it because he's building the church here. What we saw, 127 people on Friday night, was what this church is going to be in several weeks. Full, packed to the brim. And you might not be here. You might even try to come back. The Bible says there is a profane man. His name was Esau. And though he sought it carefully with tears, Harold, you know what he found? No place of repentance because he missed his opportunity. And your opportunity is this one that's here before you this morning. I'm not going to remove you. Let it be said on the record. I have not kicked one person out of this church and told them never to come back. But God has. I'm just the dresser of the vineyard. I really appreciate the way the Lord tells this parable in Luke. That he tells him, cut it down and get out. And the dresser says, well, let me work on it one more year. Let, let, me, let me dung around. Let me try to see if I can work with him. I'll give him another $20 for fuel. I'll, I'll buy him dinner one more time. I'll take him to the bank and give him some money. Do whatever I can to help them. And then he turns around and says, but if they don't produce in this next year, go ahead. You cut them out. Well, that's where he's at this morning. He's fixing to cut it out. If you don't heed the mercy that's being before you, if you don't get on your face and repent like never before, you are going to miss your last opportunity. And it's not one, there's several. Verse 33 says this, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. Whoso hearkeneth. What's that word hearkeneth mean? It means listen. Whoever listens today whether you're here or whether it's you're at home, whether you uh, you decide to listen to this after the service because things caught you up, that moment you hear it, that's your final, that's it. There's no more opportunity after that. God will pluck you up. Your response will determine your eternity this morning. Be lifted up in pride and fake it. Come to this altar and put on a show. God will show he will show the world who you really are. He may do it in death. He may do it in calamity. There's people in here that are facing calamity that if you could see it, you would have already been at this altar. But what I've foreseen, God has showed me, is there some of you that are going to wish you repented. 
trust me when I say this, that God will confirm his word. I'm not just up here preaching. I don't yell and scream. I don't like that. This is the message that God has given you, and it's your choice. Time's up. Make up your mind. Either you're going to live for God today or you're done. Either you're going to start committing fully, pay your tithes and offering on time, be faithful to the house of God, or you're going to walk away never to return, and calamity will fall upon you, judgment will fall upon you like you've never seen before. Let's all stand this morning. God does not want music. God won't even allow me to let the kids sing you a song to help you pray. What he wants from you is true repentance. You can leave, but you probably won't come back. If you say, well, I, I got to go. I got this to do. Okay. We'll bid you adieu, and we probably will never see you again. But if you come and repent, God will fix it. He wants a sign from you. I preached about that little bit of faith. But some of you have lost it. Without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say the word impossible. impossible. You can't please him without faith. And you faked your faith. It's time for you to figure it out. Time for you to find it again. The scripture keeps coming to my mind this morning that if you are, he was wishing, he wishes in Revelation, I think it's chapter two, that you were hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. You ever spit something out your mouth? God's fixing to spit you out his. When you're in God's hand, no man can pluck you out. But when you're in God's hand, God can pluck you out. And for some people in this building this morning, it's, it's time for you to fall on the rock and be broken. Or you're going to have the rock fall on you and you will be crushed. I promise you, there's no more time. Time's up. Make up your mind.